I will enter relationships with the same sex. So uh, I am gay. I'm going to be producing work that's going to redefine labelism, that's going to redefine pronouns, redefine gender and sexuality, which means the children who are born now growing up are going to be using my academic contributions into the society as a point of reference. I actually feel sorry in hindsight for my parents because I don't think they knew what they got themselves into when they gave birth to me. I mean, nobody could have known. I didn't know. Uh, the Stabane, you know, word came onto my life. I was already judged. I was already judged for not playing soccer with the boys. As a matric, I think that's where I went through my first voodoo attack. The spells that were sent to me were even worse. Um, um, no, it's because you, you're going to be my second wife. I would have not survived school if it wasn't for my girlfriend. Hello, son Mona ni Jumelang. Ika mauzandi. Isbongo umpela umalo antelo. Lo anteka lo 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 LGBTQIA plus community. By the time start with this with this with these episodes, in Delbu Suwas Washola Balletas causing yes, Konabaka was washola balletas, Ubalegi, because this is education. You never know what is going to happen in future, and you need this information. So it is important that you make sure that you subscribe. Turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss any of this education. You call it the Meaningful Conversations with Zanim Vega. I call it the School of Life. And I am blessed <laughs> to have my blessing on the studio. Hey. Hello, my blessing. Hello, my blessing. How, How are you? Are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. good. Cheers. Welcome to the show. Okay. Welcome and thank to you the so school much. Of life. For, yes, welcome to the school of life. <laughs> and thank you so much for honoring my invites. You're most welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for having me. I'll say Mklenje. Gabulela, I had to show <laughs> off. <laughs> thank you, Gabong. Ngela, there is somebody who lives under a rock somewhere in this country who doesn't know who you are. Stop. There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, okay, cool. Um, so Mina, I'm a Muzizuma, as popularly known. Um, but God called me, God chose me, God uses me, so I go by Uma Kosi Zuma Ipobesilim Klo Puspin Daspo Zul Kos Lama El Name Pigu Zabatala. Um Gihamba no Zuma and Hamano Kabazel and Gumtani Rosum Tana Moyum Tana Tik. Oh Zuma o Kabazel. Yes. Hey, is it Sobin a song came Saben? Yeah, yes. I yes, especially about Baba Lemyam. Yes. You? So my dad is a Zuma, mm -hmm. and then my mom is a Mkize. Oh, yeah. I thought you were saying that, oh, Zuma is Trazel, or Sarah Zuma is singing, it's Kabazel. No, 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 no. I, we just, yeah, I just kind of summarized it. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> now I get it. Hey, that, it was too fast, so I was, I, I guess I, I, I picked up what I know, and then I was like, Kabazel, oh, okay. Yeah. So, Muzi, who... Oh, Oh, you've just told us uh -huh. uh, you are the chosen one uh -huh. but apart from you being the chosen one can you give us a little bit of a background about who you are where you come from where yeah. you grew up um sure um so like i said i am 32 years of age turning 33 this year whoop whoop double digits <laughs> um yeah above but the calendar above the calendar yes um i am born and bred in peter marisburg mm -hmm. um yeah grew up in marisburg um and then you know jumped ship to joburg to go and try um <laughs> the hustle no i didn't no we would think um i went to joburg initially for um for him phone door. i went there oh, to go study okay. uh, um where were you studying so no no we don't talk about that trauma anymore <laughs> <laughs> no 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 so i'm quite well studied i don't like um so there i don't know there's 
I have a, a different understanding of PTSD and trauma. Okay. Um, so I've got a different concept of moving on and the things that constitute what moving on does. Mm -hmm. And part of moving on is not looking back. Okay. Um, you know, so so there are experiences, there are milestones in your life that as great as they were, qualification mm -hmm. is amazing, but it's four years. And within that, that four years, there's a lot of emotions. There's a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of um, things we as black people go through, particularly as black people, mm -hmm. black children, Changes everything. New, new setup, new scenario. I think, yeah, no, but more importantly, yes. you know, um, and then there are different things that we end up being faced with, you know. Um, so yeah, but um, yeah, when I got to Joburg and um the hustle spirit or bug bit me, I mm -hmm. I grabbed it, you know? So I think a lot of people popularly know me as a celebrity makeup artist. Um, that was one career that I I really founded my feet in. Um, but yeah, Umozi has, has gone through, I think, the whole plethora of the industry. You know, we've mm -hmm. done radio, um, we've modeled, we've done um, a lot of TV work and we've done a lot of makeup work. Um, and now we're and here. And that makeup work is amazing. Bless, thank you. Thank you. And now we're here. Now we're here. Now we're honest students. Um, you know, so we're still we're still continuing the hustle just mm. on a different from a different podium. What are you doing? You are an honor student. Um, what program is it? So I'm doing my honors in education and my specialization is gender and education. That's where I want I want I wanted you to get to because yes. there's some there's something that sparked my curiosity there with gender, but we are going to get into that one. Apart from you being umuzi, being umakosi, um, we are in this thing of awareness and, mm. and acceptance of the LGBTQIA community and plus. Um, uh, as you have seen some of the previous episodes and before I invited you, I explained why I wanted you on the show, on the show, particularly to educate the people, to educate the community so yeah. that they can actually understand the community better. Um, within the letters, which letter do you associate with? So I think I'll, I associate myself with um, non-binary, mm -hmm. um, but I've added to it gender fluidity because okay. I feel like non-binary does throw a lot of people off. Um, and I feel like we as a society need to get up, get to a place where we move beyond labels. But in you, order... You said non-flu? No, so gender fluid. Gender, oh, gender, gender fluid. fluid. So yes. we are learning a new term. <laughs> I think for me... My, my <laughs> graduates, there's a new term that we are learning today. There is so much learning I have... You will never understand. I have learned so much with just this couple of few episodes that we've had. Now we are learning something new. So it's gender fluid. Can you break it down for us? Because remember, yeah. gender fluid, fluid. Yes. So basically, um, I think throughout all my journeys and speaking to different people, grooming different people, holding mm -hmm. different workshops, um, for me, it's become important to not use terminology that throws people off. Mm -hmm. um, so I found that because gender fluidity does express who I am as an individual, okay. um, I found that pairing that with non-binary makes it easier for people to comprehend. Mm -hmm. Because non-binary, Angeti, means you're like in the middle. You have the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. You are an expressive mm -hmm. individual. So gender fluidity introduces the gender topic because it means that's what non-binary is. It, it, it's a it's a fluid it's a fluid state of being where you're not confined to just the boy and girl dynamic. You're not confined to just the, the pink for girls and, 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 and blue for, for boys, boys mm. um, you know, dynamic. You, you are fluid. You go between the pink and the blue. You go um, between the boys and the girls, you know. Mm. Um, so I found, especially because, yes, you're based in a dial manager, so mm -hmm. I do encounter Labo Koko, I do encounter Labo Baba. There's a lot of people who reach out to me, you know, who um, have gone through horrible situations with their families post their coming out stories. So it's mm -hmm. been so important for me to really explain to the elderly here in KZN, Uguti, we're not alien, mm. we're, we're not anything foreign. Mm. 
And now that I've aligned myself with my traditional umbilical cord, I am able to add that context mm -hmm. to really bring the elderly back to Izinto Zasemandolo. And when we bring things back to Izinto Zasemandolo, you see their eyes opening and they start receiving their children just as children and not because of their labels. And I feel mm -hmm. gender fluidity has allowed me to kind of open up that conversation, to not approach um as if I'm coming to attack because Kumbula I came out to my parents they are not talking to me mm. the situation already is very sketchy so you need to have strategy when you're approaching that family and I find for me the best is you know we're not here to attack you we're not here to say you're doing anything wrong or right we're not here to to judge you mm. I'm just here to add a bit more context I'm just here to to explain a bit more of so explore your levels of comfort yeah it, it's like umtom tala umtom tala a uma prochi a uma prochi ngen gondo yok fund yok fundi so no 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 go to yaz we naguna yes eh, you are living in a as katinez in honor because now long on the other yeah mm. yeah so i think for me what was important one of the reasons why i ended up taking makeup seriously in my life is that um i wanted to show um my parents never supported me doing anything in the arts mm. they've always wanted me to do something academic something you know that has a title that they can brag about mm. um and mm. i think that is uh, the context for us a lot of a lot of us African children mm -hmm. you know so when I gave them what they wanted when I gave them that degree I asked for my emancipation from the shackles of African households I asked them can you just allow me to to, to explore me this passion that I'm yeah. Passionate about. yeah and uh, and and on that note um I to show them how serious I was mm -hmm. I asked to come off allowance and I'm just like I'm gonna make a career out of this and it's gonna be um a career that in ends up but can you just allow me to be me and um i'm privileged that when i asked that my parents didn't uh you know didn't argue and they just said okay mm -hmm. and for me what was important is because the beauty industry is also very understated you know the beauty industry is also very it's underwhelmed got it's got a lot of stigma you know so my makeup artist or you know so i wanted to build a brand and i wanted to become a person that when a younger me a younger version of me goes to their parents and says i want to be a makeup artist their parents are able to go to to google and they're able to find a beautiful cv you know um, a beautiful body of work that can give them courage to support their children i think what's important for us as the generation is to heal the generational wounds mm -hmm. so um so for me, you want to look at breaking those stigmas and changing those narratives. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, manje, I'm not just changing the narratives in the LGBTQIA plus community, mm -hmm. but also in in Izinto Zimbilo, things of life. Um, you know, to to give young children, young black children, mm -hmm. the the courage to to explore their talents, to mm -hmm. explore their crafts, and to know that they can make a profitable career out of it. Mm -hmm. You mentioned gender fluid. That, yeah. Um, from you. Online binary, you've added gender fluid. Yeah, can the two use? Can the two be used separate? They absolutely can. Mm. They absolutely can. E. Just a follow up to that one. Would you then say um, there is a difference between the two? I will. Um, and I think um, just to start that off, um, the the four terms that I'd like to introduce to to, to your dictionary ne, mm -hmm. is we need to know that firstly there's sex. Mm -hmm. When we speak about sex, we speak about what you're born as. Yes. So we're speaking about your biology. Mm -hmm. We're speaking about the your gender that is on your birth certificates. That so the sex, yes, mm -hmm. that's the sex, mm -hmm. right? And then when we go into gender, we we look at gender as a socially constructed um, entity. You know, gender is is known and it's been spoken about to be performative. So when we say gender is performative, it, we're speaking about how an individual chooses to express themselves. Mm -hmm. So now we're speaking about what you're born with, right? So those are the things that you have. You either have a penis or you have a vagina when you're born, mm -hmm. right? And then we speak of gender, you know, when we speak about gender, 
those entities aren't involved in how you express yourself. Oh, okay. Sibambe la pog is classin. Yes. Sna sal. Kona kona ba kona ba slow pele monga be usu shesha kakul. Kona ba slow fenes bezwe gal. Yes. There is sex. That is what you are born with. Yes. There is gender. Yes. The gender is what this, is what is socially constructed. Yes. What education came and told us what gender is. Yes. The gender is what is associated with color at most times, which is pink, blue, whatever. So with expression. Mm -hmm. So now, um, with you being in the community, with, with what sex were you born with? So I'm male. Mm -hmm. I was born as male. Still am male. Mm -hmm. Still very content with being male. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Um, but yo, I think Yazi into Eng Sizile me now myself, because also this I needed to go through a journey where I educated myself about who I was. Mm -hmm. Right. So ooh, 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 being able to separate between between sex, between gender, between sexuality and sexual orientation mm -hmm. helped me come to terms with myself holistically mm -hmm. because I was able to 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 give myself my own context. Ugoti, I was born as this. Mm -hmm. Um I express myself as this, my sexuality, my, my, I'm attracted to this kind of person, mm -hmm. my sexual orientation, I will enter relationships with the same sex. So uh, I am gay, you know, so those are the four entities. I always say, go to Muntumifunugu's founder, um, have those labels, write those labels down mm -hmm. and then answer it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Uguti, this was my, uh, this was my birth sex. This is how I feel I express myself. Remember, this is interchangeable. So you as a woman can express yourself in terms of masculine, uh, like with your masculine construct, right? Mm -hmm. So you write that there, Guti, I, I express myself. I feel more confident expressing myself either on the, um, uh, on the road of masculinities or femininities. Mm -hmm. And then break it down now, Guti. Man, Jege, it's not just about you. We are bringing another person into the picture. Mm -hmm. Firstly, what kind of person do you see yourself with? Mm -hmm. um, before we even get to the intercourse, be, before we even get to Ekamerin, what kind of person are you wanting to build a household with? Mm -hmm. And that helps you figure out what your sexuality is. Sexuality is how you express yourself when it comes to relationships. Mm -hmm. Am I going to be more maternal? Am, am I going to be like my mother? You know, Am I, am I going to cook? Do I lo like cooking? Does my husband like cooking? Do I want a husband who will cook? You know, those are the things. Uguti, what am I saying? sexually attracted to mm -hmm. what gets my blood boiling you know so that's where you can draw your own list of what you want to see in a partner and then break down what your sexual orientation is mm -hmm. what are you attracted to who do you want to have intercourse with who would you feel comfortable like mm -hmm. you know i would feel mm -hmm. i feel comfortable like mm -hmm. that's why i label myself as gay because that's my sexual orientation my sexuality i am my mother's child um so with that, I express myself like how I grew up watching my mom and my sisters. Mm -hmm. That's my sexuality and my expression. And that's where my feminine um, side comes from. That's where my femininities are allowed to shine. Um, and then we break it down to the biology and the and the expression of, of, of the individual, which then means I'm born a man, but I am non-binary. Mm -hmm. So I say you can use non-binary and gender, gender fluid, fluid separately because um, you can just say, I'm non-binary because I like wearing both from clothes you know mm. where you just like remain like fashion wise yes non-binary because i like shopping from the male aisle and i like shopping from the female aisle mm. so you're you are using that gender constructs interchangeably right um and then it goes deeper and deeper and deeper you know um but it's it's just about that masaguba kona if fluidity if fluidity is when you're not confined by any label it's like fluid which, which water. Means now you flow. You 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 just flow within sec different sexes. So you just flow within life. That's why I say you don't have to attach non-binary and gender fluid together, mm. because um you know kunabantu who just want to flow, who want to mm. flow with their errors, who want to flow from their teens to their young adolescent years mm. to becoming an adult and being fluid with what the world is offering them to experience and explore. This fluidity, would you then say that it's um, other people will be talking about the term of bisexuality? Would you relate that fluidity to the same to, to that same letter which is bisexual? Um, Does it link? I think I would, but um, 
again expression wise mm-hmm. so like you know bisexuals you know the sex part makes it very different makes it very bisexual which i like having sex with both genders or both yeah. sexes né? um but fluidity i don't I, i don't think we should um confine such a powerful word mm-hmm. by bringing sex and sexual orientation into it um i feel like it is a word like water water is free for a soul in the rivers so mm-hmm. i feel like that is a that is an identity that we all can own irrespective of what our sexuality is mm-hmm. we all can choose to be fluid we can we can we can choose to be fluid in our conduct at home in our conduct at work and in our conduct in society mm-hmm. so that there are human beings who are like that and i think we're entering an era that that's allowing us to see more people wanting to free mm. themselves mm. and wanting to yeah. be more different you know so we are entering a very fluid era and and that's why i don't want to confine fluidity to a sex or to a gender hence there is that plus on the letters <laughs> yes. which means at the end of the day letters could go on and on and on and on mm. but at the end of the day there is always going to be that plus or that plus that we don't know of how do they associate themselves or how do, do they you know what? want to, f- to 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 um what's the term that you use fluidity yeah. how they want to flow within the context of life and everything mm. i think also I mean, I, um what i always say now is that um there'll always be a plus in life because there's always children born mm. and those children are born authentically They're, and you don't know or, what they will become or what they'll do Mm-hmm. um um and that's why i say good see we're all born um w- with one job and one purpose and that is to walk a very unique path and do so authentically so the plus will always be there because mm-hmm. also we all, we keep learning umuntu ufunda zafe izulu siyashoka njalo so the more we learn you know um now i'm going to be an academic um professional in the field of gender mm-hmm. i'm going to be producing work that's going to redefine labelism that's going to redefine pronouns redefine gender and sexuality mm-hmm. which means the children who are born now growing up are going to be using my academic contributions into yes. the society as a point of reference which means there's that expandism that happens when it comes to essentialism i think we're all learning ukuthi essentially in life we just need to make it ukuthi ogqokeni making it does not matter ukuthi you're making it as a maid you're making it as a gardener you're making it as an an architect an accountant a makeup artist it doesn't matter impilweni sizalwele ukuthi just make it and we're all trying to make it we're all trying to juggle these balls that we are do you understand ukuthi pushaka kanjani sakhi sikorokoro You, you speak a lot about your mom mm. um it sounds like to me when somebody does that it automatically tells me the good vibes that you have, you, you've got good relationship mm. how did she understand the fact that she gave birth to a baby boy yeah but when you are growing up you are conforming into a different sexuality and <laughs> do you know what i say i say this jokingly but i actually feel sorry in hindsight for my parents because i don't think they knew what they got themselves into when they gave birth to me i mean nobody could have known i didn't know mm. um you know but it, like, like like with my family i think one of my my prized moments of privilege is that i grew up in a family that didn't challenge my difference mm-hmm. i've been different since a very young age from nursery school the things that i liked watching um the schools that i attended the sports that i put took in um the extra curricular that i did so kade shame kade ngangibahlupha bazali bami ngezinto ezihlukile and mengi ithi izinto ezihlukile you know we live in the hood in lokshini esobantu in maritzburg you know so there if you give birth to a boy that boy plays soccer in the streets you know when the zonke lezo zinto i wasn't doing that um but i also think i was born in a very tricky time with my family because i have two older brothers one of them is late mm-hmm. um and i think both those my my elder brothers kind of like in their life ended up doing things which were statistically expected of umvana umnyama ukhulela elukshini ne so i think when i was born there was that that hidden fear of ukuthi how am i going to turn out am i also going to turn out to be an inverted commas a disappointment like my older brothers mm-hmm. like how am i going to turn out mm-hmm. so i think when i started doing different things and being different my parents didn't um y- y- you know question it they supported it because it 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 kind of made me go as far away from that road that my brothers had gone on mm-hmm. as possible you know mm-hmm. and and i think that's why i was sent to boarding school establishments and i think um it it was for my 
own protection, but I don't think we anybody could have been aware of what um, of, of of anything that I did while I was at school, right? Because even at school, I was that that learner who challenged status quo. You know, I mm-hmm. challenged the boy and girl dynamic from a very young age because. And, and and it's not because I knew that I was gay. It's not because I knew that I was non-binary. I didn't know. I just knew that I didn't like blue. And mm-hmm. also I didn't like pink. You know, I don't like soccer. Uh, you know, I don't like the stereotypical things that men like, you know, but it's always been like that. So I've always been somebody who's who's been vocal about that. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that sports. I want to do something different. And if I didn't want to do it, it's also like nobody, you know, fought me, mm-hmm. um, you know. So um, from school to my home life and my family life, it's just kind of always been scaffolded, supported. Mm. and guided um you know and i think um i was blessed with parents who who never told me no you know um every single time i would come back home get him mom we're going you know on a quiet trip overseas yes mm. mom i'm um, no, well not mom mom dad i'm performing on stage you know mm. um we're doing this on oh, i want to do this um next term there's a new sport mm. my parents always said yes and my parents always made sure that I had the be- best experience of all things that I wanted to experience. Um, you know, so I give them hats off to them for raising um, me because it was a lot, but it also did take an army. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then and then the challenges in the community, I can imagine growing up in a community, um, in a black community in Sobantu. Did people give you problems because those that is where the most issues lie? Yeah, from for the members of the comments usually you guys usually say that that is where they encounter a lot of problems. Yeah. When it comes to community, you find that your family accepts you and understand you yeah. that you are what you you are the way you are. Yeah. But now when it comes to the communities around you, your family, your extended family members, yeah. that uncle that doesn't understand that. I thought my sister gave birth to a boy, but yeah. all of a sudden I come here, this this boy is wearing makeup. Yeah. How was that in terms of challenges? So I'd be lying if I said um, there were any challenges that I experienced. Mm. Um, I think firstly, my parents were uber strict. So I was I, I was born um, b- uh, to parents who were extremely strict. And that means that I was locked up uh, every single time mm. I was at home. Okay. And and my dad justified it because he said, whatever toy you want, whatever it is that you want, I'll get it for you. And, and they did. And they got me everything, you know. Mm. But over and above that, um, I think also growing up in boarding establishments helped. You know, mm. I was Mm-hmm. very rarely at home when I was a young kid. Um, um, I grew up, well, I mostly grew up in Underberg, you know, so um, I would spend my holidays at my friends' farms, uh, you know, we'd go traveling with my friends, you know, mm-hmm. so I was very rarely home. But when I was, when I was home, um, I call myself God's favorite because my entire family loved me with all my differences, mm-hmm. all my uncles, all my aunts on both sides of the family. There was no gathering that we went to as a family where I felt um, otherwise or where I felt um, somehow any different. Um, but I must say to add, to end answering this question that another privilege of mine is that um, my dad, you know, kind of built quite a reputable name for himself and Ubesaj. Um, so, you know, Zalo Baba Osajwayo end up, and I Osajwayo Gashagash, Oshunishwayo, Oshunishwayo end up when he kind of gives you that extra protection. Mm. Um, so that also helped me a lot. Um, and also my my late elder brother, he was like the kingpin of Sabantu. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when he was alive, he would say that. Mm-hmm. Um, and every time he would see me cry, he'd even go shout at my friends for making me cry. Mm. For whatever reason, they beat me. You know? So all of those things, I think, <laughs> yeah, they helped me. And also, M um, like we had the best street. Isobantu guys is like a family. Mm. Oma Kelwane are like your other mothers, your other fathers. So because of that, mm. we grew up it's as that, siblings. It's that place where it literally took a village yes. to raise a child. Yes. Wow. Like our street raised me and my peers. 
Mm. You know, we would play collectively. There was even pageantry. We had pageantry in Katwenwe. It was called Umis Mbande. We had Umis Mbande and Mr. Mbande, which is the street. Also, again, there, I never <laughs> I never modeled with the misters. You I always modeled, modeled with, the with the girls and I won <laughs> consecutively. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing ever. Oh, wow. But so, um, so I, I think Kwang Caesar or Kulela um, in, in, in a place that really was a community and a place that I'm not saying Uti were perfect. You know, I'm not saying that there are no challenges. I'm not saying that I didn't go through challenges. I'm just saying Uti, even when I went through those challenges, those mm. challenges weren't weren't big enough for me to focus on them. Mm-hmm. It was always uh, water on a duck's back. It was always mm-hmm. And the fact that you had that family support and you were coming from a family that understood you very well, yeah. that loved you, it gave you the ammunition of being able to overcome whatever challenge that could come out. And not out. care. Mm. And not care. Remember, I, think, um, I, I attended schools where there were like literally... It's like 10 black people in that school. Mm. Um, so already I grew up under that stigma. I grew up under discrimin- discriminatory, um, you know, setups. And so Gang Sangik Joyel, Gang Sangik Joyel, um, 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 to get dirty like i don't know why people <laughs> never just understood <laughs> you know so i think by the time i got into like higher grades as and then the sexuality the sexual orientation bullying started mm. it 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 didn't phase me as much, mm. um, you know, because I had already been called things growing up. And also what mattered to me wasn't society. What mattered to me was my family. Was you and you your know? family. Mm. So I'd be judged and laughed at for uh, for my English. And also growing up, I, I, I knew a lot more Afrikaans than I did Zulu. Mm. And that also was a lot more judgment, you know. But Ekaya, my family never judged me. In mm. fact, I was given the mic. I was given the platform. There was no party. There was no celebration where I wasn't part of the program, where I, I didn't give a speech, they you know. And they gave me that platform, shame. They gave me the stage, coming on my manga. And, and for that, I'll always be thankful to them. I think, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's because of the village that I was surrounded by growing up, mm. that I was able to have a, a very solid um, spine and backbone um, from, from very early on, mm. from, from very early on. Muzi, tell me. You, you, Umakos. Yes. You practice traditional medicine. Uh-huh. Do you, would you like to just give us highlights of your journey? Sure. <laughs> oh, oh, as in now. How did it, how did it, how did it, how did it, what do they say? What initiated you going to an initiation school? Yeah. Okay. So I think um, I knew this question was coming and I wanted to summarize my answer as much (laughs) as possible. But um, so my first experience with Izangom or with Abanta Babonayo was when I was in matric. Mm -hmm. When I was in matric, I think that's where I went through my first voodoo attack. Like where I went through Ugloywa that mm-hmm. reached me physically as Umtwan. Okay. Um, and what I mean is that when I was studying for my final exams, um, there would be, and thank God my grandmother was still uh, was still alive during that, you know. So my mom always had a, a place of reference to go to with, with whatever it was that I was experiencing. Um, but I would experience things like Ukpagamisi Bogo. Mm-hmm. And I'd have the worst headache. I'd have red, red eyes. And I would just, mm-hmm. you know, and I kind of was brushing it off because I, I didn't know if, um, was I lazy or, you and know. you didn't understand what was happening. I didn't well. understand what was be, happening. Yeah, you to um, mm-hmm. now, yeah. Until I needed, I was going to what? I think I was going to one of my group study sessions. And when I literally walked past my grand's room, mm-hmm. I fell to the ground and he stopped working. 
Um, and that's where like nothing was moving. You just literally I came fell numb, and I was numb, numb. And, and, and like I fell on like done on the ground. Mm-hmm. And it happened literally by my grand's door. And that's where my grand was like, Maga Muzi, Maga Muzi, you know, and then it was panic because I was telling them that I can't get up. I couldn't move my lower limbs. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I was taken to Umuntu Obonai for the first time, Isangoma. Mm-hmm. That was my first experience okay. of going to going to a place like that or, 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 or a person's in Dumba. And so when we got to um, to Umakosi, you know, they they obviously said, Dugutsi, there's people who are wanting to interfere with my destiny and my studies about funding mm-hmm. Pumelele. And over and above that, Ginesipo is so hamba, hamba sing mm-hmm. um, you know. But I think I heard what they were saying, but I never took reference of what it is they were saying because Ankulanga Kagne Zangom and um, Ankulanga around that culture. This was foreign to you. You just didn't yeah. understand what they were what they were talking about yeah. or what they meant. Yes, that. you know, so I think for me the best example uh, I can give is that you go to Udogotela, Mofika Dogotela, you're not going to remember mm. the process of Ugutugla Peganjani, Noma Ukhore Ganjani, mm. when mm. you're going to remember your diagnosis. You're yes. going to remember what has been prescribed to you. Mm. So I think from me when we took what was prescribed and it helped me and one one and I was able to walk again mm. there was like an aha moment that was led to go to oh okay no there is work like this spiritually and, and traditionally mm. and ngapila forty but I think also because it shook my grandmother and my mother. It was kind of like the elephant in the room growing up. It was like, mm-hmm. okay, see, but it is because we don't know. Everything is okay. When I was doing my my final year, that's why in Gishuguti there are some, you know, qualifications that I don't like going back to. Mm. When I was doing my final year, it got worse, you know. Um, th- the spells that were sent to me were even worse. Um, mm. um, when I was 21, I was um, you know. Um, and, and again, that led me to say, even when I completed my qualification, I'm like, I want to get my I didn't attend my graduation. I was like, I don't want the stage picture. I don't want anybody to know that I've graduated. You know, and I was tw- I was 21 there, you know, again, and I think um, because now I was an adult and I was able to see the effects that this side of life is having on me as a person, I'm just like, okay, is there anything that I can do to appease my ancestors? Zoguti, I manage, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I was so blessed to have gone to um, Umelapi Ogate Engenamona also who mm. wasn't greedy, who wasn't mm. money hungry, mm. um, because they then helped me and did an entire cleansing ceremony to appease Ilozi, to appease I- Umoya Nez Tonwa, Ugutum Twana Uyakela, Utusa Ingane, Utusa Funupila, Nalani Mupiskat. And I think when I when that ceremony happened, it feels like God kind of like lifted a, a boom gate <laughs> and he was like, Anami, live. Mm. And that's exactly what I did. I lived and I started becoming, um, like running away from it. It was just like, whew, another year and there's no episode. Okay, let's go for another year. Let's push for another year. Let's push for another year. Mm. And I think I pushed till I till I reached the end and missing figure um, you know, I had experienced a lot. And for me now, I, I tried every alternative, but Uktwasa mm. up until the end, mm. you know, so I went, you know, for, to, to my psychiatrist and my psychologist, I was um, chronically diagnosed with bipolar two and depression. And I was on treatment for depression and, and, time, and bipolar well two. Aware to what actually is yes. not bipolar. Cause Abelungu, they will always find something yeah. that is wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah. But you went through the whole initiation process up until you Yeah, so in Tuasuyami started after my journey with mental illness. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think also any day I would say, okay, I remember we went to um, Isangoma and I got the Yavela Futin Dabam York twice. And I, I think I was at that era where I was frustrated. And I'm just like, I'm tired of hearing about this because but nobody's telling me what you know, and that Goko again laughed and was like, no, 
kuleka kuzowenzeka but ngimele uthwase and um the one experience that i had yeah ngiga was when i went to somebody again cuz now i'm de- now i was desperate ukuthi cuz it felt like somebody erased my name off the internet like i was not being booked i was there was no money coming into mm, me for were, a good at, three years now they attacking lento e keep up busy so much such that you are not paying attention to the message that you are supposed to go and dressing yeah and also god shut down everything so that i was, so that there was no distraction in my ear so that i can hear him nedlozi futhi langfaka esimweni where there was no other choice but to go mm-hmm. there was no other choice but to surrender mm-hmm. to and what i call it it's letting go and letting god you know because i remember um ngaya kumunye futhi umkhulu mengifika kulo mkhulu wathi uzongibekela igobongo and then awangibekela ke but literally three days into it um i woke up and kwangavuma ukuthi ngiphahle and i was just annoyed and futhi inkamba kade says nephunga ebe ngaljwayele and then when i went to the mkhulu's place me ngifika khona he sits me down and he tells me ukuthi um no it's because mina ngikubekela ezinye inkamba ngoba kahle kahle idlo zilithi you you're going to be my second wife and i'm just like wait idlo zilabane elithi i'm going to be your second wife and i think because manje he i mean i've always been spiritual Uh, I think I've been Christian before I knew your spirituality so um ngihlezi ngiyiphetha ngendlela ehlonpekile you know and I'm just like I don't understand how I can be on a journey yangkulunkulu but wena okumele ngabe uyangkhuliswa uyangifundisa usuyangishela usuze uthi ngizobuma God work yes so I think that's where I cut ties with him ngafike ekhaya ngayichitha lezo inkamba and I'm just like yabona manje I don't know what to do because manje ngizami look twasa kwange 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 kwangenzeka like what is it am I meant to do mm-hmm. you know um and I think yes we had more consultations more consultations but eventually got to a point where I had to sit down and have a conversation with God and I'm just like I've always had a relationship with my ancestors mm-hmm. um I don't understand abantu who live life without having a relationship with your ancestors I've always had a relationship with the the loved ones basekhaya you know umuntu meshona ekhaya doesn't the relationship doesn't end there yeah. and I love family I love all my family members and I love those who are alive and those who are not not alive you know so I I've always had these conversations with the people that I could reference to ukuthi abuntu amkantu lapi hawukanti kokwami ulapi you know so I think khona la ne ngafe ngayiqoqa khona ngayivalela ekambeni and I'm just like god do you know what I've tried every every alternative it feels like man I'm on this cliff and there's no other thing to do but to jump mm-hmm. so if you are telling me to jump ngiyazi ukuthi ngengile imali so ngicela ukuthemba wena angisebenzi angnamali lendlela idinga imali So me na ngokwam singvumile ngizoyihamba lendlela but I need you to give me the signs mm. and instantly after that I had my first dream which had a bayi in it because I hadn't dreamt of his god so I hadn't dreamt of a gabela I hadn't dreamt of anything in amabai in amakhandlela until that day until I had that conversation with god and then they usually say that once you see the sign of ipai and things like it is when now you actually get to know what is it that you need to do yeah mm. yeah and futhi what helped is that ipai engalibona epushweni lami was ipai ogwayo vele kule sikodlo esengiya ukuyothwasa kusona you know so that alignment gave me comfort ukuthi ah okay izinto kahle kahle ziyahlangana you know mm. but i always say now that i've gone through in the miami and sengikhulise nabantwana you know ukuthi mm. you'll be taken to that cliff mm. god will take you to that cliff mm-hmm. and you'll have no other option but to jump mm. and when you jump you're jumping because you have faith in that which you cannot see and that which you cannot touch which is actually written in the bible it's in hebrews mm-hmm. so i think i i initiated my hebrews 1 um verse 11 kind of era and mentality ukuthi i singanikela um and that's how i got into into us mm. what's your take on this issue that has been people discussing on the internet all over mm. claiming that there are so many um first of all celebrities that are now isn't abasentwa saying abange they claim ukuthi bawogobela and mm. things like that and now all of a sudden that narrative or that story those stories has shifted i i want i i usually say a myth because yeah. it's things that we are not sure whether they there or not mm. um and now that narrative has shifted into saying that oh gays bathwasa kangaka because bathwele ngokuba gays yeah 
Um, so you know when when I trusted I knew Uguti abantu bazo sholoko gam. Um, Uguti ah okay, use shuligi lege manjigle industry. Gobu se we lege manju se zo twasa use zo scam abantu in in nan 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 nan. But because I had had experience in the entertainment industry and I'd worked with people who've been hated and loved at the same time, I knew and I I, I had a very healthy response system to hate and to public ridicule. So I think for me it was important to mute the world from the onset in my journey. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's nothing I can say about others. Um, it's like a masontweni. There are good um, ministers, and you feel it, maybe Shumayela. And there are fake pastors. So that's also going to exist in spirituality, especially African spirituality. So um, it's not going to be alienated from, from you know. So there are those who are good and there are those who are bad. I took my own power and I'm just like, I am not going to give society even the thought of Uguti, I answer to them. Mm-hmm. So I think also Nami, I didn't rush myself. Mm-hmm. I literally gave myself a year after Umpotolo Wami so that I can give Idlo's Lami, I can give God Lesos Kati, Uguti, Ang. Ankulis, bang mm-hmm. you know. Um, I received my name in that year. I received um my purpose. I received more detailed instructions pertaining to my gift. Um, I uh, I don't do things because you tell me to do them. Mm-hmm. I need to. I ne- I need to understand it. I need to do something because I'm able to to make reference of it. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So I went to God and my ancestors. it's okay. You know, why Imbeb? Why Ibani? Why this? Why this? I didn't go to the world. I went to my ancestors and my spiritual context comes from God and, and spirit and my ancestors, you know? So I think for me, it I've never worried about what society says because of how intimate my relationship with God um, is right now after Intwa Soyamine. What I can say about why us as um, homosexuals or gay identifying individuals are succeeding more and are being called more now in Goba, what being a Sangoma requires you it requires you again fluidity comes in, mm-hmm. it requires you to have fluidity amongst your divine masculine and your divine feminine mm-hmm. so as a gay individual we aren't challenged with those, we know how to give divine masculine an opportunity, we know how to give divine feminine an opportunity we know how to to be governed by both our masculinities and our femininities quite profound I today because <laughs> I'm, def- I'm definitely I'm gen- definitely in a gender class one or something, I don't know very very early in the gender program now you being an academic yeah and one of the reasons I said that um, when I go there, I've always wanted to go into podcast. But I said, when I want to go into podcast, I don't want just another podcast, yeah. just another gossip, just another yeah. uh, platform where people are being belittled, where people yeah. are being laughed at for losing things and things like that. I said, I want to educate. Yeah. I want to have the the, 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 the the something, that is even why the name is saying meaningful conversation. Yeah. I want to have something that is going to last. Uh, you being an academic, I'm also in an academic space. There is a gap that I've been challenging for many, many years. Uh-huh. Hence, I realized that I cannot fight the status quo. So the only way to fight the status quo is to use what I have, which at the moment I am using the podcast. Yeah. There is this huge gap. I know that you you know it because you're also an academic. There is this huge gap in our curriculum where the curriculum is mostly influenced by British writers, yeah. Um, overseas authors, European authors, and at the end of the day, our at the, end, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, our um, students we end up teaching them to go there and become employees. Yeah, and at the same time, the fluidity that you've been uh, telling us about today, and uh, the breaking down of understanding the gender and sexuality that you've been teaching about today, which has been a beautiful conversation. Oh, no, thank I've you got so to much share for myself that. now. <laughs> and thank you so much for that. How do we now bridge this gap that exists between the curriculum? And what, when you come to a workspace, you are being 
orientation by HR mm. and what when you actually um, done with studying, you go into the community and, and advocate. Mm. Um, do you know what? I think it's understanding what your role is, Nem. Um, there is no way we can unlearn everything that we've learned post-colonization in a click of a finger. Mm. Um, as much as Zinning is Angoma, we are nowhere enough to instantly be able to change the status quo, Nem. Mm. Um, we as healers are also in that journey of unlearning in order to relearn. Mm -hmm. I always say, Mina, Ms. Kulumange Ndigi, Ms. Kulumange Kobongo, I, 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 I always use the term traditional umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. Uguti, you are born in Kabaye to Ia Ia it goes to the earth kingdom, Ia Em Tlabatini, you know. So in Digi, I Kobongo, utilizing Leon Pande, utilizing those herbs realigns you mm. with the energy of your ancestors and that's our privilege as black people our privilege as people of color is that we've got a direct line to spirit and to god we've got a direct mm. line to source um you know so it's important to understand that even when you get to your corporate or your or your school instructions or anything like that it's like irresponsible we can't respond to oppression with oppression to, we, 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 we can't oppress our oppressors so we can't say nothing now we need a new black curriculum. Mm -hmm. Now we need a new black institutionalized school. So I've been to be so humble, but you found again to. It was the corners of funding and getting to again. We don't need an institution to teach about where we come from. And so I think so that tradition can never be institutionalized. It should never be institutionalized. And the reason I say that is because it's not ours to institutionalize. Mm. You know, um, I, I think also the reason God allowed us as black people, particularly in Africa, to go through South Africa, to go through apartheid and racism mm. is because he knew yet. He knew that the thing that makes us who we are, we've got the ability to to remember. Mm. So even though we can get colonized, even though we can be indoctrinated with westernized institutions and systems of operation, mm. but we have in us the ability to remember. And that ability to remember comes from the fact that we come from grandfathers and grandmothers. And we come from those energies. You are no problem. Something that is very important there. There is something that I love that you mentioned that um, your elders will teach you yeah. what you need to know. Yeah. And um, there is an umbilical cord. You yeah. said what, what Traditional, umbil umbilical, traditional cord. Umbil umbilical cord. Yeah. Which is even when umdana marazal, when you are looking at it, umdana marazal, inkaba isasa ik Yes. It reminds me of an episode that I had um, a couple of months ago with somebody, with a, with a lady who is an energy medicine practitioner. She mentioned something that is very interesting. She said, more than anything, whatever illnesses that you have in your yeah. body, if you learn to connect more with it, mm. you can regain your nature and regain your health yeah. better than going to a medical doctor. I prescribe a medication to you. Yeah. So that's what you are reminding me now. Now, as we are close closing off, I, I don't wanna I don't wanna stop talking to you because it's so interesting. But um at some point our director is going to the Shire Manj. He's going to say, I'm oh, a blab about <laughs> <laughs> you should have briefed them what's in your talk. <laughs> and then um on on the gender side of the things, gender studies in 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 in, in holistic gender studies, uh -huh. what is it that is missing now? Not at a social level, but that you can go because I believe that there are still still things that you can still go and fix with what the children are learning today. So um, I use my platform to call out each generation, Yami. I use my platform to speak to the young generation who are now mothers and fathers. Mm -hmm. And I speak to that generation. And what I always say is that, you know, Uguti, you grew up under oppressive systems. Uyaz now Uguti, Zindro, that didn't allow you to be you. Manjengoba says zele. Let's not repeat that. You know, Uguti, when you grew up, you didn't like wearing a skirt as a girl. Mm -hmm. And there were boys who didn't like wearing gray slacks. Not because they were gay. I just don't like wearing lower gray, mm. you know? So we know that we grew up under that kind of oppression. Mm. We should break that within our children. It's like, it's like saying we can't be the generation of parents right now that still confines our own children into 
the dynamic of into the binary dynamic into mm. the boy and girl, and girl. dynamic mm. it's up to us and the thing is what's important is it's not just about changing your immediate family it's not about changing your relationship or in my household the binary system doesn't work because leon gana is a puma and go to school i think the issues that we're facing now is that as much as you can try, you know, holistically upbring your child, mm -hmm. but the child will go to a school and be exposed to the binary system. Mm -hmm. The child will go to a school and be exposed to a teacher who just doesn't want to get the gender construct and be exposed to SGBs, code of conducts that don't allow them to be adventurous and to be explorative. We need to understand that we are bringing up a generation that's not going to work in a time like we are working in now. Mm -hmm. We're bringing up a generation that's going to flourish in the fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. In the fourth industrial revolution, which has already begun, mm -hmm. things are AI. Things are technological. It, it, it won't matter whether you are filming a podcast or you are doing your work wearing a gown, a skirt, heels or slippers. Mm -hmm. It'll always be about what? The work. The work needs to be done. So I think we are in a very interesting time where the switch is happening, where we are realizing, and even some people in corporate are realizing, Uguti, actually, I cannot hire CEOs or COOs or brand managers or management. I can't just hire men because I've been missing out. You know, we've had this female who's come in and look at what has happened. A lot of people's eyes are being opened. We need to take that and, and run with it. We need to take that and fly with it because again, we are not our clothes. We are not our choices. What I can do productively, what success. I can do professionally mm -hmm. is not governed or, or orchestrated by my chromosomes. The fact that I have X, Y chromosomes does not orchestrate whether I'll be able to be an accountant, a doctor, or an artist. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a chromosomes just control my reproductive organs and the fact that I can use that to reproduce and use that to urinate. And, and I think the world is opening up to that. We need to allow the world to open up to that. We need to be those parents that challenges school governing bodies. We need to be those parents that challenges codes of conduct. We can't always run away. You know, there are woke parents who are running away and they're taking their skill, their children to Montessori schools, you know, where it's a different school. It's not like the government or, or, or the or, or the westernized or socialized kind of schooling system, you know. Kids are taught how to bake, how to cook, how to work. Like, it, 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 like, it, it includes vocational work too. It, it, it doesn't help running away because these schools still exist. So we need to be those parents. We need to find that energy of 1976, of challenging our schools where we come from, of saying, look, we need the, the females to go back to their schools, females who are working in male-dominated industries. We need those females to go back to their schools and go back to their headmasters and say, sir, look, at school, you didn't allow me to do technology. At school, you didn't allow me to do um, STEM subjects but I'm actually having an amazing career and I want the children in my school to know that they can also have a career similar to that of mine. Mm -hmm. We need to, I think we are a spoiled generation because we grew up and there Definitely. wasn't like a struggle. Definitely. We didn't have to march. We didn't, you know, face tear gas until the fees must fall thing in jiggers. But we need to bring back that spirit. We need to challenge policy. We need to challenge systems. We need to make systems more fluid. We need to make policies more fluid because right now it's like females are set. It's like a woman cannot win in this world. And that for me is a problem because as a gay identifying individual, girls had my back. I would have not survived school if it wasn't for my girlfriends. I would have not survived school if it wasn't for the girls who were my friends, who fought for me, who sometimes spoke back to my bullies when I couldn't do it. And that's why it's important for me to speak for female children. But they are always set up for disaster because when you are up for or when you've been consider, uh, considered for a COO position, the board will always say, what happens when you get married? Mm. Uzomita. 
And then you maternity leave in in nine nine. So we're working forwards only to go backwards. So the problem is not really as much the system as much as it is our mentality and our mindsets. Mm -hmm. But we need active contributions. We need active support where whoever is going to listen to this podcast, do better for your children so that your children can grow up to become parents that will do better for theirs. We need to be that generation that breaks the curse and the curse of a stigmatized mind, of a brainwashed and indoctrinated mind. The only way we can decolonize our minds is by starting within and going to the community that you have available, which is your family, which is the school that you went to. And there, there, there. But if, 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 if more people are doing this actively in their own little corners of impact, there'll be a lot more impact. In Kinga Manje, Uguti, these conversations are held by oh Mozi, no Zendi. You know, they stay on YouTube, but even on YouTube, lawyer go go sink and get as a figure with meaningful conversations. Got a foot loco, Kagakas, or seven to see YouTube. Umzuguluake, Uye, na Ogmele Ati, Goko Bensesco Lane. I watched uh, meaningful conversations on YouTube. Ngalugu Glalel, Umfage Luko, Kwaku YouTube. A boge, a fond, Messeseko to Guibuga no episode, um salise pansy, and break it down to her, um understand this. Loyal cocos or tata locum pegona, um tum zugulwag, um tanak, a becker matabastana jungle cock, you know, so. That goko takes it to a stock fail, takes it to a son twain, takes it to. Makosi, yeah. the community. Uma kelwa na ibo we makhe gibugele in meaningful conversations. Chalim tana kakfage, lakfage, lakfage. Next door neighbors, next door neighbors, next door neighbors. You know, running away to the suburbs is not going to stop it. Yes, it's not. Running away from from the bundus, from the rurals, going to the suburbs, going to Osentin, it's not going to stop it, and and it's not going to protect your child. Cause um tana kuzo kula. When your child matriculates, they're going to go into tertiary institutions. They're going to be amongst masses of individuals. Your child still needs to have a backbone there. Yeah. Your child still needs to have a space there. Yeah. So we need to be that generation and of parents that'll create the space. Yes. So we need to create that space by force. If we come from the youth of 1976, there is nothing that can stop us from doing it. Mm -hmm. We don't have failure as part of our history. We come from a formidable history as African, black South Africans. We need to remember that. We need to remind ourselves that. And now that we know that our knowledge, our wisdom was stolen from us by white people. And I always say that this is not to attack white people. If you're a white person and you're feeling offended by me saying that your people came to Africa, disrupted and invaded a system and stole it and cut the cut that link you can't be offended because that's what happened that's what your people did but now we need to redo it now that we remember we're not asking we're not asking you to tolerate me as isangom <laughs> not on this continent not in this land i'm not asking you to understand am i by am not on this continent, not so long as he is bongo sam so zoom, as long as kise. We need to have that pride again. We need to pride ourselves over it. We need to pride ourselves over where we come from. And I always say, just in closing, we don't we don't come from a history of apartheid. Mm. Our history spans back. And then 1619. Yes, 1619, that's, that's where Portuguese ships arrived on Africa. Mm. Our gods and our goddesses had long lived. Okokobetu had long lived. They had long lived amongst Mother Nature. They've long lived, been governed by That's the conversation that we need to have for on, another on the TikTok day. live. And then for another <laughs> um, day. But show you ne Uguti, I'm guilty of this. You know, I was ashamed for so many things that made me African. Mm. Um, and I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not ashamed of the place of ignorance that I come from. I'm not ashamed from being umtwana or Bengazi. And because I didn't know, I ran away. I'm not ashamed of that. I needed to do that so I can explore and I can live and I can build my own library of reference. But now that I know better, I need to do better. 
And I think that's what I'm calling out every single person who's young and who has a child or who wants to conceive. Mm -hmm. Let's do better because we know better. We are that generation that got educated. So let's be that generation that shows white men that the worst thing you could have done in South Africa is introduce a system that's going to educate us. You've allowed us to use our brains. Now we're saying, well, now I'm saying I can use my brain and my heart and that which you cannot see and that which you cannot touch. And I'll never be led astray. That's the pride that we need to bring back. We need to bring back Lubobuntu, Singabantu. We need to bring back Ubuntu. We've lost Ubuntu. Yeah. So I think when we start being more proud of where we come from, when we start being more proud of who we are, and Futi, you don't even need to go to a school and go on Google, get your clan names for this Bongo Sako, Funda I Tagazelo Zako. Mo mo kulega mo patla. Funda I Tagazelo Zako. Keep the energy of your ancestors alive. And, and, and I think for me, per, Gift Yami is involved with alchemy. But keep Okokobako alive through you. They can't die. We can't leave them in the cemeteries. They live in us. Mm -hmm. We need to be proud of that. And we need to stop being apologetic. We need to stop explaining our Africanism. I hate using an ism, but it helps. We need to stop explaining it. Because when you explain something, you give somebody the the platform to 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 think that they can they can when they combat or they can challenge no. You can't challenge my ancestors. You can't challenge where I come from. But you can't challenge It's who you are. It's who I am. You can't change I have grandfathers and grandmothers. How would have my how would my father and my mother have come to life if it wasn't for my grandparents? We've got grandparents, great grandparents. We need to start being damn more proud of it and start showing it a lot more, especially as black young South Africans. Yes, you've had it from a gender class into um, <laughs> history of Africans. I, I don't know what it was, but so I was can you just imagine enjoying the bringing me up as in Ghanek. <laughs> can you see how difficult it was for my parents? <laughs> but what I know and what I've learned is that take pride on who you are and there is no failure in relearning what is going to make you the best that you can be. So please stay tuned on the next episode because um, this conversation continues. We are not done with, with breaking down the letters LGBTQI+, and everything that comes with it. We've broken down the myths, so now we know it is not a myth. That, that, <laughs> no, it's twin. Now we know that it's not a trend or it's not a fashion rather, but at the end of the day, there is an event that is coming up. 16 days of activism, we are tired of the abuse, hate crimes, hate speech that is directed to the community. So if you are interested, come and learn with us. Muzi is joining us. He's yes. going to be on that panel that day. So stay tuned because that day, I won't be asking questions for you, but you'll have an opportunity to ask questions for yourself. <laughs> there will be a lot of learning that will take place. It's going to be a whole day event and I'm looking for sponsors. Business person out there, come, come, come through because I need you. <laughs> yeah thank you so much thank you so much for joining us it's been an awesome conversation i could talk with you in hours on end right? without even oh my gosh i know right <laughs> that that's why we have tiktok <laughs> <laughs> and then on tiktok let us just go through your social media handles quickly okay so um i'm not at uh, the only social media i'm going to be active on is going to be tiktok, TikTok okay. um but also on tiktok it's just me being me um, and and me speaking about things that mean to mean something to me. Um, so it's nothing work related. Mm. Um, um, so don't. So if you love the conversation. Just go and continue listening to more of this. Yes, don't expect an influencer. I'm not an influencer. So don't expect camera work and editing. I'm not an influencer. I'm not a beauty content creator. I'm just a human being. That's human being. I'm just being just a human what, being. What did I learn today? A, a non-binary gender, gender fluid. fluid. Yes, mm. I'm just being fluid. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, at Muzi underscore Z, we have conversations every day. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for it's having me. It's been awesome. Thank you for having me. Thank you me. so much. Um, yeah. With me signing out, stay tuned for more episodes as we continue to learn. Bye-bye. Where do I say bye? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bye.